are you stuck? Don't know what to do, tried other forms of problem solving. I'm going to take you on a walk and show you how just a simple walk can help you get insight, get you back on track, give you that piece of information that you're missing that will help you solve the problem, see the situation differently, know what to do. So I'm going to actually go for a walk, take my resurrecting my YouTube channel on a walk and see what insight I get. The idea is, is that I don't have to take anything about the YouTube algorithm. I don't even have to take what I'm talking about with me on the walk. I'm just going to look for patterns. And as you'll notice, I'll look for patterns. At the end of the walk, I'll pull together the insight in order to make sense of it. But the whole idea is to sort of hand over to an inner wisdom, a part of you that thinks creatively, that doesn't think logically for the, for the duration of the walk. So I'm basically just going to go for a walk and I'm going to notice patterns. So I'll be stopping and starting the video and showing you what I've noticed in the landscape that I can apply to me improving, creating, um, yeah, my YouTube channel. In order for you to stick around for the rest of this video, then you really do need to have a problem that you'd like some insight about. If you've got a specific problem where you are A and you'd like to get to B, there's a gap between where you are and where you want to be, then some of the insights that I share may just be, which is what happened uh, to you know loads of clients over 24 years, the fact that they get insight really quite quickly. One person, five minutes, went from overwhelmed to uh, knowing what to do. I'm Alison Smith, and for 24 years, I've used nature to help people get back on track, to find solutions to problems they face for some time. I've taken people on a landscaping your life walk, and that's what I'm going to demonstrate for you today. And one person, five times their turnover as a result of that one walk. It's a really, really effective process uh, for something that's so simple. The first thing I notice is there's a path. I'm on a very, very well um, concreted path. People are on it every day. And I think, uh, you see, there you go. I'm just about to give you the insight as it, as it applies to the situation. And that's not a great thing to do because our brain's then going logic, creative, logic, creative, logic, creative. And what we want to do is keep it in that creative state of mind. So I've noticed that there's a path and it's a well-trodden path and there's lots of people on it because otherwise, you know, people want to go from A to B and that's why there's a path. That's the first pattern. I'm stopping here, not because I necessarily, um, this feels relevant to me, but I just want to stop to show you that anything and everything is relevant when you're going for a landscaping your life walk. Because for me, this is something to do with electricity. What's going to give me motivation? What's going to inspire me? Because it could be a long path. You know, the path I'm on, um, I've got bad knees. The path I'm on can be a bit trudgy. So what can I do? I mean, I'm going to be recording these, so that's going to give me inspiration. So what can I do? What can we do to inspire ourselves? What I'm also noticing is this path is very bendy. It's like it's just done like a little S-bend. And that's just a reminder that the path isn't straight, that we are going to have blips, we are going to have bends, we are going to have to move around, work around things as they arise. It's not just a, here's the process, follow the process, this process will work. It's going to be a, oh, this bit's worked. Oh, but now the path's taken me up here. Let's not fight it. Let's not try and force my way going straight, because if I did, I'd end up with very wet feet. So it's not sort of forcing ourselves to do what we said we thought we had to do because the path is taking us a different direction. One of the things that crops up most in Landscaping Your Life walks is the desire to, oh, what happens if I go down? We know that we want to go that way. And yet it's as if, I don't know, every part of us wants to go and explore every diversion possible. I must go and test this out. Perhaps this is the way I need to go. Even though we know that the signposts are clearly showing us that we should be going in a different direction. How is that a pattern that you currently exhibit in your current situation? The fact that you have a plan, you go, right, I'm going to do this plan. I'm going to do A and then I'm going to do B and then I'm doing C. And then you do, you don't even get to A before you start going, oh no, perhaps I need to do this. Perhaps I need to do that. 
there's something about, um, in my book, Can't See the Wood for the Trees, there's something about half a path's not a path at all. You, know, you really do need to do a whole path and then you can assess whether what you've done is the right thing. Thankfully, you're not on the walk with me because there'd be a lot of time where I'm not actually getting insight. But what it did remind me of is if this is a slightly longer way of trying to solve a problem and you want something a bit quicker, then try my draw. If your problem was a mountain, what would it be? Try that um, because it's a really quick technique. Going for a walk is a slightly longer one, although as I say, the five times turnover came out as a result of an hour and a half conversation where they were the other side of the world, I was here in Scotland and I was just asking them questions about their walk and as a result of the insight they got, they t took action, they changed what they were doing and two years later um, said, you know, our turnover times and the, the walk was instrumental in giving us a new strategy, a new sense of direction. The one thing to note as well is that when you're taking a particular problem on a walk is you might notice that you're doing different things than you normally would when you're on a walk. Might be that you walk quicker, you're more indecisive and that's all part of your brain's ability to give you the patterns associated with this particular problem. So what I'm noticing, I have walked this walk quite a few times. I'm getting bored <laughs> really quite quickly and I'm also really reacting to the fact that I mean look it's just one path you can't even go slightly off the path currently um so yeah it's stay on the path Alison <laughs> stay on the path don't get distracted do what everybody tells you to do um rather than think that you can go off into the the gorse bushes um, and just get distracted and lost because at the end of the day, what's my intention? My intention is to get to the other end of the path and therefore I need to stay focused on doing that. It's also something about paying attention to the signs. I mean, the, the view through there could be really easy to get distracted with looking at that beautiful, beautiful view. But actually it's saying no unauthorised access, dangerous foundations, private keep out, there's a rail track something definitely about listening to what other people are saying which goes against every part of my being <laughs> these branches that have been cut down or fallen down and have been pushed to one side remind me to make sure that there isn't things in my way that I've got everything done that I need to do I've just done finished my account but it's just not having a long list of lots of other things that I need to do that end up then using up my time and then I get to the end of the week and go oh yeah I didn't attend to YouTube again this week get everything out of the way so that I can stick on the path that I want to be on rather than um, keep going off track this is quite a nice trickle today but when we had really bad weather the actual whole bridge was taken down a reminder perhaps to attend to your well-being make sure that you're doing enough in the week to keep you your mind body heart and soul infused energized rather than just focusing head down which i notice i have done a bit on this walk head down and sort of um, dragging my feet a little bit head down it's really easy to miss the beautiful view so it's not necessarily getting distracted with the view but just looking at the view for inspiration looking at the view to help your body as much as anything else um so yeah what can you do to actually keep your head up to be inspired by that beautiful view which just so happens to be of edinburgh across the firth of forth there may be times when the path isn't as clear and to keep to the path i suppose here because those leaves are hiding potentially a drop i mean you can see a little bit there where the edge is but i don't know that i'd want to make an assumption that that's the case all the way along so if there are things covering up your path just keep to the path that you can see even if it makes it a smaller path because that's that you know that you're safe you know that that's you can see what it is you're going to be standing on rather than potentially finding a hole underneath these leaves. I always think this is a funny place for a bench because <laughs> what can I see of the view? Whereas if the bench was just a little bit further to the left, we'd see a much better view. 
So how is that relevant? The fact that I'm, <laughs> yeah, we've got, we've got to enable ourselves to be seen. It's about positioning. If you're positioning yourself right in front of the trees, people aren't going to be able to see you. And I turned round and noticed all this ivy and it's sort of going up all the way up the bank and it's as if it's throttling it. Now, normally it might be that that's safety, it's keeping the bank, everything safe on the bank, but my mind in relation to YouTube is making me think about not throttling. So I think there's something about not doing the same thing all the time, um, not overdoing it, not gushing so much. <laughs> <laughs> it feels like, yes, I'm going to post every day. Um, and that's what just happens. It's all becomes a bit, a bit, bit much of a muchness rather than be like some of these beautiful trees, stand out from the crowd rather than just get lost in the crowd. There are times when it's going to get dark and boggy and you're not going to be able to see. That's okay. So we need to just look for light at the end of the tunnel. And I've actually written a poem about light at the end of the tunnel and I'll put a link to the um, yeah, I'll put a link to the video where I share that insight. I always love coming out of tunnels because it's, once you come out, it's sort of like the look at the view, trees, it's so much more open. So if you're feeling enclosed, it's not that I'm feeling closed forever. This is this is such a great reminder of why we need to stand out of the crowd. Because if, if every video is just a piece of seaweed, it just goes on and on and on. And yet, look, look at all this here. Look, look. I realised I realised too. It's useful to have um, end goal, but also interim goal. So. Where I'm going is round the end there and quite a bit further, but there's a place to go before then, something to eat, something to sit down, a rest. So don't make it all about that end goal. What is it that you can do to have an interim goal? What am I going to do this week that will see, feel like success to me? And as I walked, I realised that my prescription for well-being journal could also be used for YouTube. So I need to go back and write a prescription for developing my YouTube channel. The whole premise is we have a prescription normally for well-being, whether it's um, sleep, whether it's mental health, whether it's focus, motivation, getting out of the rut, whatever the outcome is, we write a prescription. The prescription is, what's the outcome? How am I currently feeling? What do I need to do more of? And what do I need to do less of? Quite often it's the, what do we need to do less of that's tripping us up? We know what we need to do, but a lot of our time and energy is being used up with um, <laughs> what we shouldn't be doing. Um, so for instance, I know that when I get out of sorts, I'm always watching a whole load of death and destruction movies and that's, and stopping doing that is going to be uh, the biggest contributor to my well-being. So what is it that you're doing to develop your YouTube channel that you need to stop doing to give you the energy and enthusiasm to do all those things that are on your to-do list? I'm also reminded, I've come about five or six miles from home along the coast, and I'm also minded that the view is different from every place, so don't stay in one place, don't stay static, continually evolve, continually move, show things, you know, the same thing but from different perspectives. The whole idea is once you get back, you summarize the insights and then see what that means in terms of taking action so when i get home i'll do just that and share with you what my insights have been from this walk so here's a summary of the things that i picked up during the walk about things that i can do that to help these are things that i can do to help me with respect to youtube growth it could be that you can use these it could be that you've noticed different patterns that apply to either your youtube channel or it could be a different problem altogether what i hope i've done is demonstrated how going for a walk noticing the patterns can help you solve problems and that's what this channel is all about so do please subscribe so that you can see other demonstrations. 
And also, here's a summary of what I picked up that I need to stop doing. Again, these may resonate for you. It may be one of these, it may be all of these, it may be none of these. It may be that you've picked up something completely different. But I'd really, really love you to subscribe so that I can grow my YouTube channel. There's a surprise. And what I'll do is I'll put a link to a playlist about other Landscaping Your Life walks that I've been on, other insights I've shared around problem solving, seeing situations from a different perspective.